Hey guys, it's your girl Fuzz and welcome to a brand new series that I'd like to introduce to the channel. This is called Indie Find It Friday. This series will be jam-packed with gameplay, reviews and tips that I can suggest to you guys if you want to pick up these games for yourselves. Today's first installment for the series is a game that I've been wanting to play for some time which is called My Time at Porsche. Let's get into it. My Time at Porsche is an open world farming simulation that takes you to a town called Porsche. My Time at Porsche starts off with your grandpa's workshop which is run down, being left at Porsche and you have been given the keys to the door. At the start you have been given the choice to customize your character and the customization options are endless. You can choose from gender, hair, face style and you can even choose the color of your skin. I decided to go with the blue color because I thought why not try out and see what it looks like in the cutscenes. You can even choose your birthday and I'm not sure what you can do with that yet. And the adventure begins. You set sail and head into Porsche and meet with a character called Presley who meets you at the start of your adventure. He is a resident of Porsche and shows you the way to the workshop. If you're playing this on PC, the controls are pretty easy to learn. They use the normal shift to run and space to jump, although the controls are a little janky to move around. I believe it might be because it is a port over onto PC that the controls aren't so swift, but it's still nice and easy to use. Once the workshop has been handed over by Presley, it is time to sleep and for the next day, it is time to set sail on your adventure. The game does a decent job on directing you where you need to go. On the top left, there are still some controls you need to learn and simple things like the mailbox are pretty evident at the start. After a little bit of running around, some glittering stars were on the ground and I decided to run towards them and pick them up. That's when I found out that foraging exists in Porsche and you can use these items for your workshop. I decided to do this for a while and then I realized that my SP bar on the bottom, which stands for stamina points bar, was actually depleting. Every time you forage for something, it uses two of your SP points. Then I also realized when I was running around that a circle appeared next to my character's profile, so I realized there was two types of stamina being used in this game. The first one was for collecting forages and completing actions such as hitting a tree or mining some rocks. And the second one is your sprint circle, which appears next to your character when you use shift to run. This is similar to the sprint circle, which is used in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. When I realized I was using too much of my stamina points bar to even know what I was doing, I decided to run into the town of Porsche. The music and ambience was very chill, almost comforting as I roamed around the town. I then found Presley again, who gave me a task of making a pickaxe and an axe. He then mentions that there is a commission board that you can interact with in the Commerce Guild. This will have tasks from villagers of Porsche and, when accepted, will require you to hand it in to that villager and in return you will receive goals, which is the currency of the game, workshop reputation, experience points and relationship points with that villager. So after being given this task by Presley, it is time to go and craft that back at our workshop. Back at the workshop, there is a workbench that you can interact with. On the top left, you'll see there are a few tabs that you can explore to craft things. You can click on the exclamation tab at the very end and this will present you items that you need to craft from missions that you have active. This reduces the mindless clicking throughout the tabs and having to remember what you need to craft. This will definitely be handy throughout your playthrough. After crafting my pickaxe and axe, I headed back to Presley at the Commerce Guild to complete the mission. Then the mission to use the assembly station appears. This assembly station allows your character to build machines that will produce you certain items. The game does a great job by showing you a blueprint of the machine that you want to build and what items are required to build it. Returning to Presley after the completion of the mission starts the next part of the story. You are then introduced to Higgins, who is another workshop owner of Porsche. Presley then explains that Porsche has many workshop owners like yourself completing tasks for Porsche residents, meaning you aren't the only workshop owner building things. This creates sort of a competitive feel to Porsche to see who is the better workshop owner amongst everyone. Arlo, who is another Porsche resident, comes in and then gives you the quest to build a bridge. The game, although requesting you to build it, doesn't quite direct you on how to build this. This is where Porsche lets go of your hand and allows you to explore the world of Porsche on your own. I decided to head back to the workshop and interact with the assembly station. The assembly station will ask for certain items to be used to build specific machines. And if you feel lost, the book that you interact with when interacting with the assembly station will tell you where each material can be found for the machine that you want to build. For example, I needed some copper ore, which can be found in the abandoned ruins number one, which can be found back in the town of Porsche. 
At the front of the abandoned ruins number one, I met with Remington, another Porsche resident, who explains that there is a cost to enter the ruins, but anything that you find within it, you can keep for yourself. Although a payment is required for seven days of access within the ruins. A short tutorial within the mines explains the exploration of the ruins. You have a jetpack that allows you to get some air and you have a scanner which, when pressing the F key on PC, will scan the area around you for relics which will be used in your gameplay. When activating the scanner, look around for a yellow dot. Hold your cursor on that light so the distance between you and that light appears. And then break your way through the mines towards that artifact. There will be plenty of artifacts to find within the ruins. At first I was a little confused on how the ruins work, but essentially the whole interior of the ruins is mineable. The darker grounds will give you stone. The brownie kind of orange ground will give you soil and sand. And the gold kind of ground will give you copper ore, which is what I needed. During a run in the ruins, I found an abandoned room. It was small with a few weak enemies to fight and a few chests with some cool items in them. When using your scanner, these will show up as a purple dot and are usually found at the bottom of the ruins. If you find yourself mining for too long and you don't have any more stamina points, you can actually press the M button to open up your map and press E to return you to the beginning of the ruins, which means you don't have to backtrack at all. The next day I decided to explore my inventory menus as I hadn't done so yet. In the missions tab, missions can be selected and deselected here. Selecting them shows their location on the map and appears on a to-do list on the right when you're roaming around the town. Your character tab has a skill tree where you can use your skill points after leveling up. I felt like I preferred this kind of leveling system compared to something like the Stardew Valley leveling system because every action that you complete in Porsche will level you up whereas as something like Stardew Valley you'll have to do certain actions to level up in that skill. Working down the tree is required to unlock your character's full potential. Your inventory is your backpack. Your character already has a couple of backpack rows unlocked. Using the currency within the game, you can unlock rows in your backpack and there are three pages that you can unlock of this. Then it was time to see what Porsche had installed for me. Meeting different Porsche residents opens up Porsche a bit more and also increases your friendship with each resident. The first resident I decided to meet was Jenga, who owns a restaurant in Porsche and allows for cooked meals to be enjoyed within here. The second notable character that I interacted with is Petra, who works at a research center within Porsche. She is great to hand in data disks that you'll find within the ancient ruins. She'll try and collect data from these data disks to unlock recipes for your character to use on your workshop. There is even a recovery machine within the research center that allows your character to craft cool decorations for your workshop using the relics that you find within the ruins. The residents come alive in Porsche during a raining day. The residents can be seen with umbrella hats. After interacting with some residents at Porsche, I decided to explore the outskirts of Porsche. And this is when I found out that enemies can be found on the outskirts of Porsche. I didn't want to attack these cute little enemies but I decided to just swing my axe at them to see if they'll drop me any items. After realizing that they did, I decided to whack my axe even more at some other enemies to see what they would drop. This made the outskirts of Porsche feel a little more dangerous with some animals hanging out in games. Crafting a sword is important for combat if you want to do more combat and that can be completed back at your workshop. Fights require not only damage output but dodging hits at the right time. Remember this when fighting your enemies. After fighting for some time, I ran along the river on the outside of Porsche and that's when I found fishing spots. I decided to run back home, craft myself a fishing rod, and then realized that I needed some bait to take along with me. Bait can be randomly found when picking up forages, or you can buy these at Sophie's Ranch, which is the ranch directly across from your grandpa's workshop. After collecting some bait, I ran back to these fishing spots and tried it out. There is a mini game that appears when you're reeling in fish and it's a little bit funky to get to know. If you're on PC, you wanna hold your mouse or your circle on the fish and reel it in with your mouse click. Easier fish will obviously be caught quicker whilst other fishes require patience and slowly being reeled in so they don't break the line. So far in my 8 hour gameplay I've been selling these and this spot by the waterfall has the best priced fish. It is called the Goliath and it is the big giant green fish. Just be patient when reeling him in, he can be a bit of a mighty one to pull in. Random events happen on certain days in Porsche and the first one I joined was the fishing day. It was lots of fun to compete with other Porsche residents because I started to feel like I was a part of the town. And with this event, I decided to show off my fishing skills by collecting as many fish as I could. Winning this event allowed me bragging rights in Porsche, but I honestly just enjoyed it for the interaction with the other residents in Porsche. 
After a few days and a workshop upgrade, this is how my place looked. I expanded the space a little bit and I also placed down some machines which were built through the assembly station. I was happy to see my progress being built at this place and it gave me endless possibilities of what I could do with my workshop space. I really enjoyed my gameplay at my time at Porsche. After moving on from Stardew Valley and picking up my time at Porsche, I felt like I was playing like a 3D version of Stardew Valley. And even though the beginning of the gameplay was kind of all over the place because my time at Porsche doesn't really hold your hand too much, just like in Stardew Valley, it allowed me to learn more about the town and what I could possibly do on my workshop. I do definitely suggest running around, interacting with residents and figuring out what you can do on your workshop. I generally had a lot of times going to the ancient ruins and you using all my SP there, but if I felt like I was getting too many materials there, I ended up using the next day to get forageables instead. I definitely also suggest building some chests at the workbench at your workshop so you can place your items that you've collected in there and you're not holding them all the time. Also, it's good to point out that a lot of your days will become repetitive because you're collecting a certain amount of materials, so if you don't like the repetitiveness, this might not be the game for you. But honestly, that's the only downfall that I've had of this gameplay so far. Overall, my rating for my time at Porsche is definitely a 9.5 out of 10. I didn't mind the repetitiveness, I didn't mind that I had to experience things for myself, and I feel like there is so much more that I can explore, which is what I'm looking for in a farming simulator game. If you want to see a part 2, let me know in the comments section. If you've enjoyed your stay today, why not consider leaving a like? And if you want to see more videos, why not consider subscribing? I hope to see you next time. Do take care of yourself. Take care.